what would you like to see moving forward with this drug issue? Well, I think in terms of the drug issue, um, and again, not just with the opioids, but, but all of them, I think that uh, the province of Ontario could play a greater role in coordinating um, interministerially in order to get some of that low-hanging fruit dealt with, whether that's uh, access to naloxone or suboxone, um, and even dealing with some of the, the challenges parents are facing with respect mental health um, and, and I think that there needs to be a greater degree of uh, support for parents who are struggling and that's happening and I, got, I have to say I'm very pleased that uh, we had some big community leaders here today like CHEO, uh, the Royal, the Youth Services Bureau, um, as well as the Queensway Carlton Hospital and uh, obviously public health. Uh, public health is uh, here. Uh, they've been responding as quickly as they can to some of the challenges we're facing. And. You're one of the only politicians, especially locally, that we have seen talking about this issue. What would you like to see other politicians do as well to continue to keep this going and to help this issue? Well, I was pleased that my, my leader, Patrick Brown, joined me here in, uh, in, in the PN uh, to talk to we the parents as well as uh, others of, uh, who are dealing uh, with substance abuse and that he came up with a, a plan uh, on an opiate strategy for the province of Ontario. So obviously I'd like the Liberals to adopt that. Um, but I would also encourage other MPPs to do the same as what we've done here today, which is bring um, about 50 families together under one roof uh, with, with major health care experts in addictions and mental health uh, to talk about how we can better communicate with our children on these important and stressful issues. And, and again, like it could be alcohol addiction, it could be drug addiction, um, it could be depression, anxiety, stress. Uh, but I, these are stressful times for our kids, we have to recognize that. And so I would encourage other politicians to do the same thing. And I know that there's been some municipal politicians in Canada that have been active, and I uh, congratulate them and, and I encourage more of that. And if change does not continue to move forward and people don't step up their effort as a community, what could you see uh, the outcome being if things don't begin to change? So I believe personally, uh, with respect to uh, mental health and addiction, that we're reaching a crisis point. So it, it's very important that government uh, cre create a, a greater awareness role of, uh, and, and in order to be more preventative or at least show people where they should go. Uh, today I was uh, made aware that public health has one of the most incredible uh, inventories of mental health and addictions resources. And so I would encourage parents to go to that website so they know where to take their kids and when to take their kids uh, to these facilities. And I think that's really important. Um, the other thing is there's another component. Government can't and, and, and isn't able to do it all in of itself. And I think it's important for grassroots organizations uh, such as PLEO, such as We the Parents, to uh, to engage with others and, and for others to engage with them to see how as a community we can better address this. Neighbors should always be helping neighbors. And that's been my mantra since I was elected in 2006. And what, are you, what do you want to do to help this problem moving forward? Well, I'm going to continue my advocacy. Um, as somebody who suffered from depression and, and anxiety, myself I think uh, I have a duty to continue to have that conversation to end the stigma and I certainly have a role with my constituents um, whose children and who themselves may be suffering from anxiety depression or addiction uh, to continue to be their champion both at Queen's Park but also locally here working with the wonderful agencies we had out today close to 30 organizations uh, all with wonderful information um, that will help educate our parents and and uh, and others and, you know, we the parents and other groups have been saying that the curriculum needs to change. What do you think about that as far as that goes? Well, the curriculum changes every five or six years. Um, I think uh, perhaps the, the best way to address this is to make sure that we are in the schools. And I know that, that we do have public health in schools. I know that there are uh, counselors in our school system through the STEP program. So I think that that's obviously very critical. But it, we're always going to have to constantly figure out how to best reach children and that's why today uh, we had um, a segment that was designed just for youth so that the kids today can understand what the drugs of tomorrow may look like and what the uh, and, and, and what they can do in order to best cope with uh, feelings of stress anxiety and depression and, and perhaps other things and how to talk to mom and dad because that's going to be really critical in, in if they if they have a face an addiction issue if they are feeling overwhelmed how do they talk to mom and dad about some of these issues
And you have a young daughter. And what would you like to see for her? And what are you doing as a parent to make sure that she doesn't fall down the wrong path? Well, you know, we've had the conversation. My husband and my daughter are both here today participating in the breakout sessions. Uh, so as a mother, uh, all we can do is arm our children and make sure that they're resilient and they have strong character and know that they can contact us for for anything that they're going through. And, and uh, I wanted to make sure she was armed with information today and my husband was armed with information today. I've been to a couple of these sessions and they've really benefited me. In fact, the Ottawa Carleton District School Board, of which my daughter uh, is, uh, is a student in, uh, held a session at Longfields Davidson Heights a, a month ago and I was able to learn uh, uh, on, on how to talk to my daughter thanks to the work of public health and others uh, who did a presentation that evening and, and talked to, to us about what to look for and so I'm just pleased today that my husband and my daughter are able to participate in something similar. And why is hosting this event so important for you? Well, a year ago today I publicly announced and disclosed that I had been suffering from, from depression and anxiety. So my husband and I, a couple of months ago, decided that this would be a nice, uh, a nice way to mark that uh, that event, which uh, also created a bit of anxiety for me a year ago because I was uh, was quite overwhelmed with the with the very positive response I received, but also from the response I received from people who are still struggling. So we wanted to mark it and uh, with a mental health summit. And after the um, the recent uh, rash of overdoses to these opioids, uh, the Royal and I had a conversation about actually expanding it into an addiction piece as well. Uh, so uh, I thought it went fairly well. We had almost 100 people here and we had uh, good, good representation from about 30 organizations and I know uh, having spoken with some of the people that were here we actually did help some people and that that means a great deal to me and it, and it, and it provides me with the uh, momentum I think we need for a, t a similar event next year.